September is our anniversary month, so this rock formation was serendipitous. It was either a recent creation, or just us being a little more observant right when we got in. Either way, love is in the air. Uh, water. Get ready for some of our best experiences and animal encounters from September. In fact, you might want to find some place comfortable to settle in. The month started with a few coral spawning dives. Spawning is not guaranteed, and while waiting around one night, I noticed there were a ton of things in the water column, so I moved the lights in front of the camera to get a better look. These things appear to be larval mantis shrimp. I may be dating myself, but they remind me of the ghosts in Raiders of the Lost Ark. We also saw a couple of these things, which are called elapomorpha larvae. The bifurcated tails suggest they may be tarpon, ladyfish, or bonefish. Anyway, after several unsuccessful nights, we did eventually capture staghorn coral spawning. Those are all the floating orange circles. Competing for camera time that night was a school of silversides. They loved using my lights to feed in the water column and didn't leave. At some point, they were joined by bloodworms. Those are the red streaks. I tried filming this octopus, but the camera had a very hard time focusing. They also got in the way of capturing this ruby brittle star, which was out in the open. Fortunately, I was able to get some usable footage. We get quite a few first-time captures at night, and we'll start with this ornate chitin. It was hard to capture between the coral and rock, and those silver sides still weren't helping. Another first-time capture on Bonaire was this furry sea cucumber crawling down a small coral head in the shallows. The third happened very quickly. We were looking into a coral head and briefly saw a couple of shrimp scamper away from the lights. Turns out they were two claw shrimp. So, here's something embarrassing. I started filming this mollusk, which may have been a first-time capture, but was inexplicably distracted by a green turtle. I mean, I've seen those a million times. When I returned to the mollusk, it was gone, and I couldn't find it. So disappointing. We did find this charming porcelain crab shell, but it didn't move despite all the activity going on around it. So it had either just molted, was sleeping, or sadly passed away. Either way, it's a beautiful shell. Our final nighttime clip is something we see quite often, but certainly not in these numbers. A small patch of gorgonians in the shallows had way more flamingo tongues than we're used to seeing. We're not sure if the sea plumes were just really tasty, or if the flamingo tongues were mating. Large aggregations of animals were not limited to our night dives. For example, this giant anemone provided shelter for a small community of squat anemone shrimp. They're so tiny. We also enjoyed getting passed by a school of southern senates that made several large loops around the shallows. For a couple of days, the visibility was just incredible, and a few of the sites were particularly picturesque, even with all those brown chromas. Clear days like these make it easy to spot squid, and naturally, Leslie wanted some pictures. It's kind of interesting, the way they line up like that. Of course, individual animals are equally fun to watch. This octopus really didn't mind who was around as it hunted. Well, we were there and kept our distance, but some of the fish had to get out of the way as it moved. Green moray eels don't seem to have that problem. The next several highlights don't move nearly as quickly. This is a milk conch. The white shell is responsible for the name, and it's about half the size of a queen conch. Okay, this one didn't move at all, for obvious reasons. Still, a six-keyhole sand dollar was a pretty nice find. 
Another nice find was this sun anemone. We saw lots of those when we were on Curacao, but they are quite uncommon on Bonaire. As are hybrid hamlets, which, as the name suggests, are the result of two different kinds mating. In this case, perhaps it was a yellowtail crossed with a yellow belly hamlet. We've seen Palometa at various sites, but this is the first permit we've captured. Generally, the fins are longer on Palometa and they have vertical stripes, while permits have a splotch. Off the reef, we were lucky enough to catch two gorgeous spotted eagle rays, swimming majestically and probably deliberately over and around us. However, they weren't the only things slicing through the water. We actually saw DPVs at two different sites on the island. One typically has currents, and the other seemed like a training dive. We talk about the shallows all the time in our shore dive collection videos, so why would these highlights be any different? Have you ever noticed mounds or small hills in the sand? Well, they may be caused by acorn worms that live in burrows and expel their waste up to the surface. Also in the flat, sandy areas, we noticed a number of orange-spotted gobies acting as lookouts near holes in the sand. We approached several cautiously, but not slowly enough, apparently. Eventually, we saw their partners, which are sand snapping shrimp. They push out sand from the holes, which serves as protection for both. Shallows with lots of coral rubble are terrific places to find sailfin blennies. We found lots of them at one site, and they were on full display. Finally, we dive Salt Pier regularly, so we decided to switch it up a bit and explore the south buoy. There's a heavy chain that drops down to 35 feet and continues to the south. It's pretty loud if you're near it, and you can definitely hear it if you're in the general area as well. The chain doesn't end under the cement slab, but keeps going for a couple hundred feet. Just beyond the slab, you can see an older chain as well, full of coral growth and pockets of rust. Anyway, it ends here, in about 20 feet of water. Where's here? It appears to be roughly as far south as Salt City, which is the next site over. Now you know. Also on that dive, we followed a sculptured slipper lobster out for a walk, which was very odd because it was like 2.30 in the afternoon. If you like these uncommon animal and unique experience videos, good, because we enjoy making them. You don't really have to do anything except wait for the next one. That said, if you want to offer some encouragement, consider subscribing to the Tropic Lens channel, hitting the like button, or write us a short note in the comments section below. We love hearing from you guys. Thanks! Smiley face.